everyone, welcome to Python for Academics. In this video, we're going to start learning about processing files with Python, specifically processing lots of files at once. In the first exercise, we're going to learn how to rename files by appending some characters to an already existing file name. So let's say that you generated lots of files uh, with your research results but you made a mistake and forgot to add a tag that labels that specific case. So let's say that you generated files that have the following format for the file name, but you would like them to also be uh, prefixed by this case one uh, label. So in this exercise, we're going to generate uh, some test files, which are empty, uh, but I wanted to mention uh, that you should be extra careful once we get into all of these operations on files because you're actually going to act on the files that are stored on your computer and if you're not careful you can uh, rename wrong set of files so always be sure to check if your uh, if your code works test it on some uh, on some a test case first and then just make sure that you run your scripts in the location that you would really like to uh, run those scripts in. So we're going to uh, start by generating the empty uh, test files that have the following uh, file name uh, format and I'm going to show you two ways to do that. The first one is going to be uh, simply by uh, using the touch uh, Linux command. So if I uh, say touch uh, file name, let's say .txt, then this is going to create uh, an empty file uh, with the with that given file name in a uh, in a specific directory. Uh, so I'm going to because I'm going to generate twenty of these files. I'm going to use Python to help me generate 20 of these touch commands. So we're going to uh, create a for loop for i in uh, range 0 to uh, 20. Uh, we're going to print uh, touch and then we're going to use that uh, file name uh, pattern now we're going to add uh, the index which, to which we're going to add 1 so that the files are, are labeled from 1 to 20 instead of from 0 to 19. Um, and so if I execute a code like this, oops, I need to add plus here. If I execute code like this, then this generates um, 20 touch uh, commands which I can copy into the terminal. Uh, I'm going to do one extra thing here, so you can see that I would like my files uh, to be named by, to be indexed by three digits, and uh, we can do that in Python by using the zfill uh, function, which is going to pad uh, those numbers uh, by zeros, however many zeros uh, that is needed to match uh, the three digit pattern. So if I specify three, this is going to create three digit uh, pattern in those file names. So I can copy that code and paste it into the specific location where I would like my data sets to be stored. And now you can see that uh, I have my files uh, generated in that location. In a moment, they should also appear over here because that's the same location okay the files are there uh, and uh, the second way to generate those files so i'm going to go ahead and delete them for now the second way to generate uh, files is by using uh, python's function open with the x uh, string which tells the function open to generate a file uh, if it wasn't there uh, in that uh, directory so I'm going to copy the file names uh, for these files and also because my Jupyter notebook is uh, stored in a different directory I'm going to specify the relative path to where I would like those files to be created and now I'm going to run this open uh, uh, function in a for loop 
So we'll go ahead and execute that code. And in a moment, those files should appear over here. Okay, we have those files. Now, notice that if I try to run this again, uh, it's not going to let me uh, run that code again because it detects that those files already exist. Okay, so now we have our test files, 20 test files, and we are going to proceed with this exercise and append this case one uh, prefix to all of these files. And for this, we're going to use um, a, an OS li Python library, and we're going to import uh, a few useful functions from this li library. The first one is list dir, which is a function that will allow us to list all of the items in a given directory. And the second function is going to be rename, uh, which will allow us to rename the files. We're also going to import uh, one more function from os.path, which is called is file, which is uh, going to help us detect if a given uh, item in a directory is actually a file. So now we specify uh, the directory on which we're going to work on in this exercise. Now this is the place where you should be extra careful and make sure that you really run your code in a, a directory that you would like to run this in because you're actually acting on those data sets and sometimes the mistakes can be very hard to undo. And now we're going to create a list that stores all of these file names and we're going to use list comprehensions to do that. So we're going to write files is equal to i for i in uh, list dir, list dir directory. So this is going to uh, create uh, a string from a file name that is present in that directory, but then we're also going to add an extra if statement in that list comprehension. Uh, we're only going to uh, add a, a file name to that list if, if this is actually a file. So we're going to use the isFile function to detect if, if a given item is a file. Now we have to uh, specify the, the path to that file name. Okay, and this list comprehension now created a list of strings that store all of these file names in that directory. So now the, the, uh, the last thing we need to do is to loop over all of the files in that uh, files list and apply the rename uh, function. So I'm going to do that um, again in a, in a for loop for i in, um, okay, let's say for file in uh, files, we're going to first specify what was the old file name and what is the, the new file name that we would like to have. So the new file name is going to have this prefix case one plus the uh, the remaining uh, part of, of the of the file name, and now we're going we're going to run uh, the function rename. We're going to give this function two arguments: old file name and the new file name, and we'll go ahead and run uh, this piece of code. And if we wait a little bit you can see that uh, these file names have changed. <clears throat> so now I'm going to teach you also a way to undo this. Uh, so in order to undo this operation, so rename those files again, we're going to have to run the, this piece of uh, code again. So we're going to have to create a new list of file names because the file names have now changed. So I'm updating my list of files. And now we're going to copy that code and we no longer want to add a prefix to that file name, but instead we would like the file names to start from the seventh index onward. So if I run this uh, piece of code, you can see that the file names uh, went back to, uh, to what they were at the beginning. Um, so 
as you start building your Python uh, toolbox, you can, al you can also uh, add uh, a little bit of extra uh, diag diagnostics that is printed as you perform those uh, file name changes. So for example, uh, we could count how many files have been uh, changed. So let's say that we set initially some counter to zero and then at every uh, at every iteration we're going to increase uh, that counter uh, and we could also print at the end of the of the for loop uh, uh, we can we can print that we have renamed that many files and we could also print uh, how the old file name uh, was called and uh, what is the new file name. So just some diagnostics uh, for you to make sure that the code runs as you would like. So now I'm going to undo the renaming operation again. Okay, and we're going to run this piece of code. So now you can see that we uh, get some information about how each file name has been changed. And we also see that we have renamed 20 files. So in the next video, I'm going uh, to show you a more sophisticated way to rename uh, files using regular expressions. Uh, this will allow us to to search for locations of specific words or specific characters within the file name and then replace or remove them. So see you in the next videos.